there's about 40 or 50 people on the platform. We're waiting for the 7.05. I noticed a gentleman sitting on the bench. He seemed to be sleeping. I don't even remember walking to the station. I've got no recollection of any of it. We watched this guy closely for a little bit. We could see he wasn't breathing normally or he was sort of choking as he breathed. I remember walking up the ramp and seeing a man on the ground and someone else giving CPR to him, which was Bruce. Is he awake? Uh, no. Is he breathing? Uh, not breathing, is he breathing? Breathing sort of. I just finished my first aid training, which included CPR. And I learnt there that, you know, if somebody is giving someone CPR, that you should offer to assist them to give them a break because it is quite tiring. So I said to Bruce, you know, do you, can I take over? I know CPR. One, two, three, four. One, two. The ambulance is on its way. It's coming as fast as it can. Keep going. You're doing really good. Three, four. I was really scared. I was wondering if I was doing it correctly. By doing the effective CPR that they did do, they were able to keep the blood flow and the oxygen going up to his, up to his brain, which limited any damage um, that he would have had with his heart not beating effectively. I escaped with virtually no permanent damage or anything, and all the figures suggest that that shouldn't have happened. So if they didn't get in the neck so quickly, who knows? They've obviously done a, a fantastic job with their CPR due to the result. It's just so good to see that somebody has no problems afterwards and is able to go back to work. That's great. I've been accused of being a bit more forgetful, but the reality is I was always a bit forgetful. <laughs> I'm actually going to go and renew um, my CPR skills. It's a very simple thing to do to make such a difference.